The St. Lawrence River has been made famous for its clear water qualities ever since the 1980s. However, in recent weeks, this has changed. Residents have been voicing their concerns regarding the milky and blue-green tint of the river and spots on Lake Ontario, and experts are moving quick to answer their questions as to what is believed to be a whiting event. And what's happening is, is in the lake, uh, the lake's stratified, where there's warmer water that sits on top of a thermocline, and then there's cooler water down at the bottom of the lake. Well, the, those surface waters have really warmed up, so they're, they're getting quite warm, higher than average, well higher than average, and then that, that water uh, circulates in that top layer with winds, and there's been a lot of sunlight, and we get uh, what we call is uh, a phytoplankton bloom, and uh, those phytoplankton are, are microscopic uh, plants, if you will, and they, they are taking up carbon dioxide. So when they take up CO2, it actually reduces the acidity of the water. So um, when you reduce the acidity of the water, it, it, it can lead to a, a, a pH increase. So the, the pH increases. And, and when you reach a pH of about 8.3 or a little bit more, um, it can cause the calcium carbonate uh, to precipitate onto the phytoplankton themselves, which are like microscopic algae. These are really tiny algae. Um, and then those, those particles kind of turn white and it, it gives us this milky color. Because it, I was saying before the, that increase in temperature being uh, an important uh, ingredient, we have been seeing increasing uh, lake surface temperatures uh, over time. So the, the lake uh, and river water temperatures have been on the rise. Um, and there's uh, like multi-decadal data sets that show that increase. So it's possible um, that we might be seeing these with greater frequency, but I think that would require more research. So, but for now you can just look at the water and, and you can start to see um, if changes are occurring just by looking at the color of the water. Um, if you look very closely, you'll see particulates in the water. You'll see algae. Um, algae grows on surfaces. It's also what we call planktonic. It's in uh, the water column. And, you know, as we get closer to fall, we're going to start to see the temperature drop. Um, and, and, when, and I think we'll get past this, this uh, area where the solubility of, of all these uh, minerals in the water uh, will change. So that may uh, stop the uh, uh, process of the um, uh, formation, formation of the calcium carbonate. Um, and then they'll also, you'll need time for the carbonate in the water, the calcium carbonate to fall out of the water column. Although the exact cause of this uncommon phenomenon is still being studied, Dr. Farrell and other researchers are ensuring the safety of all nearby residents. Yeah, I don't think it's a health concern. Um, you know, there are uh, people have probably heard a lot in the news lately about um, PABs or harmful algal blooms. Um, and I'm not, again, I don't know the specific algae that are involved in, the, in this whiting event, but these are usually caused by um, plankton that are called um, picoplankton, and they're, they're really tiny. They, they go from like uh, 0.2 to 2 uh, microns, so really, really small. Um, they can become encrusted. Uh, there's specific layers that can become encrusted with the, the calcium carbonate um, and they fall out. Um, we study uh, other aspects of the water quality more closely. So this took me a bit by surprise this year, but I have noticed uh, whiting events in the past. Um, I just can't remember one this extreme uh, before. It's a natural occurrence, so it's nothing to be um, it, too extremely worried about at this time. For ABC 50 Now, I'm Isabella Colello.